I'm the Ember, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this sci-fi environment in Blender. This tutorial will be fairly basic, so you won't need to know heaps of Blender to make it. So let's jump straight in. So I'm just going to select the light and the cube, and press X to delete that. Then Shift A and add a plane. I'm going to press S then 10, so that's S and then typing 10. And then I'm going to go to the modifier properties, add a displace modifier. And for this displace modifier to work, we have to subdivide it. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode, right click, subdivide, and we can open this little drop down over here. And I'm just going to make the number of cuts, let's say like 50. And then we can tab back out of edit mode. I'm going to add a new texture and click this little button over here and that'll take us to the texture properties so i'm going to click this button over here and add distorted noise now we can leave all these settings at default i'm just going to go back to modify properties and i'm going to turn the strength down to like minus 0.3 or something yeah maybe 0.3 now i'm going to select it right click shade smooth maybe i'll make this a bit more dramatic Maybe 0.05. Yeah, 0.05 looks pretty good. We can come back and adjust this later if we need to. Then I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh Plane, scale this up. Then GZ, move it down. So this plane is going to be our water. So I'm going to go up here and name this water. And I'll name this plane Land. Might scale this water down a bit so it kind of fits a bit better. And that's looking pretty nice. So now I'm going to press Shift A Mesh Cube. Go to top view. And let's scale this down on the Y axis. You can hold down Control which makes it snap. Point 0.3 looks good. It looks like a good size. And then I'm going to press SX. Scale this out a bit. You can hold down Control again to snap it. Go to the front view. GZ. Move it up. SC, scale it like this. I'm just going to duplicate this, so Shift D, duplicate, and then you can right click to cancel that, to cancel the location, and then SZ and scale this down. I'm just going to select both of these and actually just scale them on the X axis a bit. Something like that looks pretty good. Now I'll move this one down to the bottom, make it a bit thinner. Then I'm going to select this top one and add a bevel modifier. And I'm going to press Ctrl A and apply the scale. Then we can add a few more segments. Seven look good. And right click and shade auto smooth. Then I'm going to select the bottom one and hold down shift and select the bigger one. Ctrl L and copy modifiers. That will copy the modifier to the bottom one. Now we also need to press Ctrl A and apply scale and right click and shade auto speed might scale these a bit more out on the y so sy and then control a and apply the scale okay so i'm going to select this bottom one hold down shift and select the main one then control e and set parent to object so now if we move this main cube it moves the bottom one as well so that's better now i'm going to name this main cube ice and then I'll just put it over here. GZ, you can move it down a bit. Now I'm going to select our camera, press Alt-R and Alt-G. That resets the rotation and the location. Then we can press RX and we'll just type in 9-0. GY, move this back. Then you can press GZ, move it up. And we can press this little camera icon over here to toggle camera view. Then I'll also move this back a bit more, so GY. So I'm just going to select this cube, move it forwards a bit, maybe like here. Go back to camera view. And I might just scale this on the X a bit. Control A, apply scale, same with the bottom one. So now I'm going to press Shift A, mesh, and add a circle. You can see it added it in the center, but I wanted to add it over here where the cube is. So I'm going to delete that and press Shift S and cursor to select it. 
Now that puts the cursor in the middle of the selected object. So I'm going to press Shift A now, Mesh, and Circle. Now I can press R, X, and 90. Rotate that 9 degrees on the X axis. Go to Side View. And I'm also going to press Alt Z or this little button up here to toggle X-ray mode. Then I'm going to press S, scale this down somewhere around about like this. Then I'm going to press Tab to go into edit mode. If all these vertex is selected, I'm going to right click and subdivide and turn the smoothness all the way up and increase the number of cuts to about three. Then I'm going to press E, right click to cancel the location, then S scale that in and that looks pretty good so go back to camera view scale this up a little bit now i'm going to go up to the tab that says shading and click on that okay so i want a rock texture for our wall here so just open a browser then just type in ambient cg click enter then go to ambientcg.com and this website has a bunch of free materials. So then we can go up to materials over here. And I'm going to type in rock. So we have a lot of options here to pick from. I kind of like this blue one. Yeah, let's just go over this blue one. So click on that. Then you can download the resolution you want. I'm going to download the 4K. You don't have to download the 4K if you don't want to, because it is pretty big. You can just download the 2K if you want, because it's a lot smaller. But I'm going to download the 4K one, because it has a lot high resolution. Okay, so that's finished downloading. Now I'm just going to open this where it saved it to. So once you've downloaded it, it will be a zipped file. So you might just have to unzip that. Select it, right click and extract all. Then just click extract. Now we can delete the zipped one, we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to close our browser now. And it's going to double click into this file. Go back to Blender, click our land, click new, and call this land. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger and just close these two side tabs. Now I'm gonna go back to our file browser, select our color, our roughness, and our displacement. You can hold down control and click to select multiple at a time. Then I'm just gonna drag those into Blender, like that. So now we've got our materials. I'm just gonna bring these over here. And I'll plug the color into the base color of the principal BSDF. Let me just rearrange these nodes. Okay. Then I'm gonna plug the color of the roughness into the roughness of the principal BSDF. And then I'm going to press Shift A and add a bump node. Let me just move these around a bit. I'm going to plug the color of the displacement into the height of the bump. Then plug the height into the normal of the principal BSDF. So that should give us some bump here. You can see the difference. Might make it like 0.5. Then I'm going to press Shift A, add a mapping node a texture coordinate like that then I'll plug the object socket into the first vector socket then plug the mapping into our images like this now we can click and drag on these scale values they'll change them all at once we can turn down we can scale down our material like this so I think something like that looks pretty good. I think it has a bit too much bump, so I'll just make that like 0.35. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Also, don't forget to save your Blender file. Okay, so now we need to make the water material. So I'm going to select our water plane. Press new material. I'm going to turn the metallic all the way up. The roughness down to like 0.15. Then I'm going to add a noise texture and a bump node. I'm going to plug the noise texture into the height of the bump and the bump into the principled BSDF. Now we can scale down this noise texture. Somewhere like this, pretty good. And then turn the strength of the bump down. 
turn it way down like this okay so now i'm just going to go to the render properties change your render engine from ev to cycles and the device from cpu to gpu compute i'll also change the max viewport samples to 32 and the max render samples to 212. now i'm going to go up to render view and click on this drop down here and just disable scene lights and scene world from them okay so now i'm going to select our ice object click new material and call this material ice so i'm going to add a noise texture again a color amp this and i'm also just going to go back to our rock material and select these two nodes with those two nodes selected i'm going to right click press copy go back to our ice material right click and paste now I'll plug the vector into the noise textures vector. Then I'm just going to connect these up. Let me just also bring all these in a bit. So if we just plug the color amp into the surface, you can see what's happening here. You can just clamp the color amp a bit like this. You can see what's happening. So I'm going to turn the scale up a lot. Somewhere around about like this and the detail turn that all the way up and just adjust these values till you have something you like <laughs> also if you don't like the positioning of your noise you can just change the z of the mapping that will like shift it around a bit i think this looks pretty good now i'm going to plug the principled bsdf back in I'm going to go down to transmission and turn the weight all the way up. That will make it see-through. I'll just adjust these color and dials a bit as well. That looks pretty good. So now we've got our glass material. I'm going to select our circle. Click new. Delete the principled BSDF. And then add a emission node. I'm going to plug the emission into the surface of the material output. Make the color a blue somewhere around like this and i'll make the strength like 50. now I'll select the thing underneath the ice click new make the color like a dark black slash gray metallic all the way up and roughness down i'm going to also select the circle and pair that to our ice object control p parent the object gz and i'll just move these down a bit now i'm going to go back to our layout and go to rendered view also going to go down to world properties make the color all the way to black now i can turn off overlays to see how it's looking the emission a little bit brighter so go back to shading select our circle let's make it like 60. we can go back to the layout now now i'm just going to do a test render so hit f12 shouldn't take too long okay so this is looking pretty good I have a few adjustments I want to make, so I'll just close this. I'm going to select our land, go to modifiers, and add a subdivision. I'm also going to go back to solid view. And if you turn the subdivision on and off, you can see the difference it's making. Okay, so that's looking pretty nice. Now I'm going to go up to compositing, use nodes. I'm going to add a glare node, change it from streaks to glow and add a lens distortion node and enable fit and jitter and it'll make this 0.1 and distortion 0.01 i'm going to press ctrl s and render render image okay so that looks really nice i'm just going to go up to image save image and i'll just call this image render and we can click save as image so that's basically it I hope you learned something from this tutorial and had fun making this cool sci-fi scene. Please subscribe if you want more of this content and I'll see you in the next one.